Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to create and customize your live stream in a few minutes with Live View Studio. My name is John Porterfield, folks call me JP. Welcome to this Live View Studio quick tutorial session. I'm a webcast producer and I'm going to show you how you can go live within a few minutes. First, Live View Studio is a 100% cloud native live video production solution, enabling live switching and multicasting from your web browser. In this session, we want to mix in the cloud with the following elements. A live video source coming from a live view field unit with a custom background and some lower thirds. And we want to publish this mix program in a live output to YouTube, Facebook, and a live view receiver at the same time. Those of you who are not familiar with a live view field unit, it's essentially an all-in-one professional portable video encoder with bonding capabilities. A live view receiver is a decoder cloud or physical. Very often, you'll want a physical decoder to get the program output from Live View Studio back into the physical world. This way, you can get the SDI or NDI out from the physical receiver. For more information about the Live View ecosystem, please visit liveview.tv. Okay, let's get started and go over to my shared screen. I'm already logged into the Live View Studio account for this demo. Let's start from this calendar view. Now I can select and create a new live stream, then enter what we call the virtual control room. Before we set up, let's have a look at the user interface and what are the three key parts of it. The three stages of the cloud instance that mixes the show here at the top horizontally. Second, the preview and program. Third, the vertical toolbar on the left. First, there are three stages of, for each live streaming event here at the top on the horizontal axis. Setting up for configuring the show, testing for verifying the live workflow, and then publishing for going live to all destinations. We'll come back to the destinations or publishing points later in this session. Right below the three stages, we see both the preview and program, which are now disabled because we are still at the first stage, setting up. There is currently no active cloud compute running for this show. We'll need to move to the second stage for testing once our workflow is complete. Let's have a look at the vertical toolbar on the left and start with the production tool. It's a visual mixer that shows all the inputs and graphic elements in producing an event. Here, we start with the clean control room in our setup. The visual mixer in the production tool works in layers. This would be similar to what you would do with a physical mixer or what we might call vision mixing to add your live sources and graphics. We see the first layer at the top with the default lower thirds. I can activate the lower thirds by simply clicking on the box. I disable the lower thirds by clicking blank on that layer. The same goes for the layer below, which currently contains nothing. Let's add a live video input on the second layer. We want to bring in a live view field unit. I click on add input, then select on the left input type, live source. Finally, I select a live view channel. As you can see, live view studio provides up to eight cloud live view channels. Let's select the first one named ST01 and use it. I can see this first live source in my visual mixer here at the bottom there. As a quick note, in this session, we are showing you a Live View field unit leveraging the LRT directly to Live View Studio. LRT stands for Live View Reliable Transport. You can also use third party encoders, software or hardware video encoders in RTMP or SRT with the Live View Studio. You can even add a remote guest via a URL link leveraging WebRTC. The remote guest simply needs a computer or a smartphone with a webcam and a microphone. There's no special application needed to access the link because they join via the web browser. Next, we want to add our customized background to the visual mixer. Add an input on the second layer. Select the input type image on the left. Today, I'm using a static image background for simplicity purposes. I could also instead use a video with motion graphics for my background. I upload the image from my computer. We can now see the image on the second layer. The last step of our workflow today is to add a template using the live source and our customized background. It's very important to remember that you need to add an input to add something into the mix. So add an input on the second layer. Select input type template on the left. 
As a pro tip, Live View Studio provides you with a standard set of templates as well as the option to customize your layout. Today we'll use a standard template. Let's select this template with one live source and some room to see the background. Because I already uploaded my background, I can select it from here and click Add. We can now see the template on the second layer with the Live View channel selected and a customized background. Okay, let's jump over to the testing stage. Let's click Start Test Now. Note when you start when you start a test, it may take a minute or so because it's creating a running instance in the cloud. Okay, we've created our setup. It's time to test the Live View field unit. This way we can verify that everything works before publishing to the destinations. By clicking on STO1 pencil, I can see the Live View unit's selections process in the edit panel left from the preview. Let's select the field unit and start the live feed. As a side note, you can control your Live View field unit from Live View Central, which is also a web-based control interface, or directly from the unit itself. You will see the Live View channels in the list from both interfaces. You will notice now that we can see a program view as well as the Live View field unit on the visual mixer. On the audio mixer, which is another tool on, from the toolbar on the left, we can see that audio is embedded in this live feed. We can see the level going up and down on this live source. We are now producing a finished program output. Let's now configure where we want to publish this to. Live View Studio provides you with the ability to grant permissions to your social accounts, such as Facebook, Twitch, LinkedIn, and YouTube, to name several. You can also publish to a customized RTMP, SRT, HLS, or LRT destination as part of your multi-stream setup. If you are providing a live stream to a video page via what we call a CDN, content delivery network, or a video service, we recommend to input that into your setup during the setting up stage. In this setup, I'm gonna add my Facebook and YouTube channels, which I granted permissions to. Also, I want to publish it to a physical live view receiver and then take this via SDI out for a traditional workflow. Okay, we are good. You see those destinations are added. Let's go live by clicking on the Start Publishing and Record. We are live. We've reached the third stage for this workflow. Let's quickly jump over to the publishing side and you will see that our live streams are being processed and multi-streamed to YouTube, Facebook, and the Live View receiver. The Live View Studio is also recording this to capture a file that you can use for clipping or create a video archive of your show. Our show was great, and it's time to end it. Make sure to click in at the top here to conclude your live event. This ensures that you will not incur any additional charges. Okay, we created a live stream in a few minutes and showed you the three stages of the process. If you want to test the LiveView Studio or have any questions about the LiveView ecosystem, please contact your local LiveView sales team in your region. They'll be happy to assist you. We hope you liked this tutorial and found the information valuable. Stay tuned, more tutorials are coming soon.